to receive the word of the divine or spiritual sense, we need to feel rather than reason. This is referred to as receiving the word in the heart. The development of spiritual consciousness results in a greater gift of feeling the harmony of being. We understand that neither seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, nor smelling will reveal spiritual truth or its harmonies to us. Therefore, it must come through a different faculty, the intuitive faculty, which acts through feeling. When we have sat down to pray or to meditate, immediately a stream of words and thoughts starts to flow. Perhaps we began to affirm truth and deny error. You can see that this is wholly in the realm of the human mind. In cultivating our spiritual sense, we become receptive to thoughts which come to us from within. We become hearers of the word rather than speakers. We become so attuned to spirit that we feel the divine harmony of being. We feel the actual presence of the divine. Having transcended the five physical senses, our intuitive faculty is alert, receptive, and responsive to the things of the spirit. And we begin our new existence as a result of this spiritual rebirth. Whereas before we were concerned with the letter of truth, now only we are concerned with the spirit of truth. We are not so concerned now with what is truth as with feeling truth. This is accomplished in proportion as we give less thought to the letter and more receptivity to the feel. This word feel refers also to the awareness, the consciousness, or a sense of truth. We are not now speaking truth, but receiving truth. And that which we receive in silence 
we may speak from the housetops with authority. Spiritual healing is the natural result of a divinely illumined consciousness. We are illumined only as we are receptive and responsive to spiritual illumination. We misunderstand immortality when we think of it as the immortality of the human personality or personal sense. Death does not produce immortality or end personal sense, nor does the continuation of human existence mean the attainment of immortality. Immortality is attained in proportion as personal sense is overcome. Whether here or hereafter, as we put off the personal ego and attain the consciousness of our real self, the reality of us, divine consciousness, we attain immortality, and that can be achieved here and now. The desire to perpetuate our false sense of body and wealth ensnares us into death or mortality. The first step in the attainment of immortality is living out from the centre of our being, as in the idea of unfoldment from within rather than accretion. It is the giving sense rather than getting. Being rather than attaining. In this consciousness, there is no condemnation judgment, hatred, or fear, but rather a continuous feeling of love and forgiveness. It is not a simple matter to show forth the joy and peace of immortality, because to those intent on preserving their present concepts of being, immortality would appear to be extinction. This is not the case. It is the eternal preservation of all that is real fine, noble, harmonious, gracious, unselfish, and peaceful. It is reality brought to light in place of the illusion of personal sense.
It is the conscious awareness of the infinity of individual being, replacing the finite sense of existence. Selfishness and conceit fall away in the realization of the divinity of our being. This realization brings forth patience and forbearance with those still struggling in mortal, material consciousness. It is being in the world, but not of it. Our progress spiritually is in proportion to the illumination which enables us to behold more and more of reality. Because the human scene is entirely a misconception through misperception, any thought of helping, healing, correcting, or changing the material picture must be relinquished in order that we may see the ever-present reality. Spiritual illumination comes to us in a measure with our first investigation of truth. We believe that we are seeking good or truth, whereas the light has begun to shine in our consciousness, compelling us to take the steps we have since taken. Every increase of our spiritual understanding was more light appearing and dispelling the darkness of sense. This inflow of illumination will continue until we come to the full realization of our true identity as the light of the world. Without illumination, we struggle with the forces of the world. We labor for a living. We struggle to maintain our place and position. We compete for riches or honors. Often we war with our friends and even find ourselves at war with ourselves. There is no security in personal possessions, even after the battle to acquire them has been won. Illumination first brings peace then confidence and assurance. It brings rest from the world's contests. And then all good flows to us 
through grace. We see now that we do not live by acquiring, gaining or achieving. We live by grace. We possess all as a gift of God. We do not get our good because we already have all good. Thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. The pleasures and successes of the world are as nothing compared with the joys and treasures which now unfold to us through spiritual sense. In the light of truth, the greatest earthly happiness and triumph are as nothing, whereas the treasures of soul have a glory unknown and unfathomed by the senses. We will fear no change in the outer picture because the outer is but the reflection of the allness within. Safe in the realization that we are individual, though infinite spiritual consciousness embodying all good. We need give no consideration to the evidence of the senses. Spiritual illumination reveals the harmony of being and dispels the evidence of material senses. It does not change anything in the universe. For this is a spiritual universe, peopled with children of God. But the illumination changes our concept of the universe. Illumined consciousness dispels the personal sense of self with its problems, ills, age and failures. It reveals the real self, the I that I am, unlimited, unfettered, untroubled, harmonious and free. This selfhood is revealed as we retire within ourselves each day and there learn to listen and to watch. Likewise, instead of anxious care about the work of the day or all the events of the future, we let the soul or our divine spirit go ahead of us to smooth and prepare the way.
we let this divine influence remain behind us to safeguard every step from the illusions of senses. Illumined consciousness always knows that there is an infinite, all-powerful presence prospering every act and blessing every thought. It knows that all who touch us on life's highway must feel the benediction of our thought. When consciousness is afire with truth and love, it destroys all sense of fear, doubt, hate, envy, disease and discord. And this pure consciousness is felt by all whom we meet, and it lightens the load they carry. It is impossible to be the light of the world and not dispel the darkness of those about us. Realize that all the good you experience is the shining forth of your own consciousness, even when it appears to come from or through some other individual. Recognize every evil appearance as a false perception of harmony and therefore not to be feared or hated. And this will result in the disappearance of the illusion and the showing forth of reality. Only illumined consciousness can look upon an evil appearance and perceive the divine reality. Only the Christ in consciousness can strip error of its seeming reality and rob it of its sting. Spiritual illumination reveals that we are not mortals, not even human beings. but that we are pure spiritual being, divine consciousness, self-sustaining life, all-inclusive mind. This light destroys the illusions of personal sense. Establish this truth within you and it becomes your real being, knowing neither birth nor death, youth nor age, health nor disease, but only the eternality of harmonious being.
This truth dispels every illusion of ego and reveals the infinite harmony of your being. It dispels mortality and reveals your immortality. Whatever in your thought is unlike this divine presence, truth itself must yield in order that you may drink the pure water of life. To free our hearts from the errors of self, self-will, false desires, ambition and greed, is to reflect the light of truth as the perfect diamond reflects its own inner light. Spiritual illumination may be attained by living constantly in the consciousness of the presence of perfection. By the continual translation of the visible picture into the reality. We are being faced with discordant appearances all through our days and nights, and these must immediately be translated through our understanding of the new tongue, the language of spirit. Every incident of our daily experience offers fresh opportunities to use our spiritual understanding, and each use of the spiritual faculties results in greater spiritual perception, which in turn reveals more and more of the light of truth. Pray without ceasing, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Translate the pictures and incidents of daily existence into the new tongue, the language of spirit, and consciousness will expand until translation occurs without even taking thought. It becomes a habitual state of consciousness, a constant awareness of truth.